G'day, I'm Mark from Soul Sufficient Me and in this video I'm going to give you 15 things food gardeners should always do whether you have a small balcony garden or a large veggie patch like me doing these things will help you grow a ton. Let's get into it. Number one, compost. Preferably the homemade stuff you make yourself. The commercial stuff is okay-ish, but there's nothing better than homemade compost developed from your own reclaimed ingredients. Not only is it free, easy to make, and sustainable, it's concentrated goodness that can't be beaten. Here's an example. This mint needed a lift. So a few weeks ago, I added compost made by our chickens. And look at it now. Plus, we got some volunteer tomato plants. What a mint idea this was. Number two, add manure. Speaking of chickens, the hen poop in the compost used to rejuvenate that mint helped a lot to make it grow so good. It's enough to make you cluck for joy. But animal manure isn't just good fertilizer. It adds so much more value to your garden, such as extra fill or structure to pump up those sinking raised beds. It adds water holding qualities to the soil so you don't need to water as often and your plants are less stressed during hot weather. Manure is food for good animals, like worms, which in turn help to improve the soil and create relationships with plants to help them absorb nutrients and grow better. So don't delay and drop some chicken, horse, cow or sheep manure in your garden ASAP as soon as pooping possible. Number three is fertilizer. But Mark, didn't you just say manure is fertilizer? Yeah, I did. But sometimes we need to add a little extra nutrients without the bulk to give plants a boost. So having a concentrated fertilizer on hand can be really handy. There are ways you can make your own concentrated fertilizer, but most people buy commercial types, such as blood and bone, fish hydrolysate, or plant-based, like this seaweed solution here, or even these organic fertilizer power pellets. They're made from compressed lucerne, and they're really good for giving your plants a bit of a nitrogen boost when they really need it. In general, most veggies enjoy a light feed every two to four weeks to maximize food crop production. So keep the plants fed by storing some fertilizer in the shed. Number four is crop rotation. Just like us, plants don't like staying in the same bed year after year. Most vegetables benefit from rotating them into a new spot in the garden each season, as this prevents the buildup of diseases and pests in the soil. If you go even further and rest beds completely for say a whole season or even several months, in some climates you have no choice, it can help to replenish the soil considerably. Or you can grow vegetables year after year, just try not to grow a similar crop in the same spot in successive seasons and this should help to lower pests and diseases in the soil. Number five, grow the soil. Sounds silly, but your soil should be alive and always growing to be healthy and a good medium for plants to thrive in. Adding compost, manures, soil inoculants or soil tonics to the soil or even burying scraps directly into the garden bed will maintain and grow your soil by feeding and encouraging animals like worms or mealybugs, fungi and bacteria. A dead sterile soil is less effective at supporting plants than a soil that's full of life. Six, grow companion plants. Now when I say companion, I don't mean a pet plant like a dog or a cat that keeps you company. Oh, 
Hello, Harby. I mean plants that go well with and or help other plants to grow. A classic example is basil and tomato plants. Both plants like similar growing conditions. They go well together in a culinary sense and basil can help to deter pests from attacking tomatoes. Marigolds help to repel nematodes in the soil and cabbage moth is said to hate the smell of mint in the garden. Beans can grow up corn and squash can grow under both plants to maximise garden growing space. So consider companion plants for a happier garden. Seven is growing season. It's generally not that hard to germinate most seeds. Keeping the plants growing until they become productive, well that's another story. And if you try growing plants out of their natural seasonal window, your chances of success is about as likely as this video going viral. Don't check the view count, check the growing guides. Local growing guides will give you the best time to grow certain veggies in your area and grow in season for better results. You did check the view count, didn't you? Number eight is diversity. Isn't diversity supposed to make us stronger? Well, eating the same vegetables all the time makes you weak. Okay, there's no evidence to prove that, but eating the same veggies all the time is boring. A recent study by the UN found over 1,000 different vegetable species worldwide, but most of us will only ever eat 7% of them. And within vegetable species, there are many more thousands of varieties. So start finding them and experimenting with these different types of vegetables in your garden because you never know what type of gem you're going to find that grows perfectly in your area and also adds that perfect diversity in your kitchen that your family absolutely loves to eat. Number nine, get pests early. We all love eating our greens, don't we? Yes, we do except for Brussels sprouts. But there are other things such as insects and larger animals that also like healthy, nutritious veggies. And if we're not on the ball, all our hard work and delicious veg will be consumed and ruined by hungry critters. And that's where this hammer comes in. Only joking. If you have a crop of vegetables or fruit coming on and you know it's susceptible to damage by pests, take care of it early through exclusion such as netting. Covering or bagging vulnerable crops will not only give you peace of mind, but it will also give you something in the veggie basket at harvest time. 10. Use natural remedies to solve problems. Netting is great, but it isn't always practical and sometimes it's an overkill. Plus, smaller pests like aphids can sometimes get through the defences. But spraying is easy to do. However, we should never use pesticides or harsh chemicals around food plants, like Big Ag does, because it also destroys good bugs like predator insects and pollinators. It's like using fire to get rid of all the cane toads in an area. It would get rid of the cane toads, but also all the koalas. Seek and use natural low toxic or homemade remedies that target specific pests to control numbers and your garden and vegetables will be much healthier. Number 11 is mulching. Earlier we covered covering crops, but it's also important to cover the ground. Now in the past, I've been criticized for calling mulch, mulch with a shh, like shh, be quiet instead of mulch with a CH, like choo-choo train. Well, all I can say about that is mulchy, 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 mulchy. Anyway, using mulch in the garden prevents water runoff, limits evaporation, therefore you don't have to water as much, protects the plant's roots from excessive heat or cold, provides a good environment for beneficial animals and fungi in the soil, and over time, it breaks down into nutrients 
that also feed the plants. Mulch. Number 12 is weeds. Now everyone hates weeds. Pulling them is an arduous task. And that's why I like raised bed gardening, so I don't have to bend over as much. But weeds compete with vegetables by stealing the nutrients, water, space, and sunlight. Plus weeds encourage and harbor pests in the garden. So pull weeds often and ensure that you weed before they go to seed so they don't take over your garden. 13, collect seeds from your own garden. Now, I do like buying seeds and plants, something new, and it's also sometimes easier, especially if you're late in the season, rather than sowing your own. There are some real advantages to collecting your own seeds, not just saving money, but you can actually create better plants. One word, adaptation. Over time, plants will adapt to your climate and growing conditions. So by sowing the seed or the offspring of your plants, you can grow back better and stronger plants in the next season. Number 14 is watering system. Personally, I like to hand water because I like being out in the garden. I can target water exactly what is needed and I can check out the plants as I go. However, there are times when you might want to automate watering. Say when you go away or you happen to be really busy. That happens to me all the time. So it's good to install a watering system even if you only use it sometimes. Because besides glyphosate, not watering, especially in hot weather, is a quick way to not have a vegetable garden at all. And number 15 is light. Let there be light. Well, the sun's starting to go down, so there's not much light at the moment. But that is why I sited our vegetable garden right in the middle of our backyard. And that was to ensure it got as much light as possible because food plants need sunlight. A lack of light is one of the most common reasons why vegetable crops fail or don't do as well as they should. I like to tell people at least try to get your veggies six hours of straight sunlight every day because that I think is the minimum. Any more is great, any less than six hours well then, it's just a little difficult for a really hungry and energy intensive food crop to be able to do really well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video because giving it a big thumbs up should bring your vegetable garden a heap of luck. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And also, do you know of any more things besides my 15 that all food gardeners should do? If you do, whack them down in the comments section below because I'll be interested to read them and we can all learn from them. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.